Hello, hi, welcome back to my course on enhancing soft skills and personality. This unit is on managing money. This is the sixth week on the last unit, unit number 5, uh, lesson number 30. So, with this, I am happy to tell you that you will be completing about uh, 45 percent of the course, that is, three fourth of the course will be over, only 10 more lectures will be remaining. So, uh, I hope you have been enjoying doing this course. Let us take a quick look at uh, what we did it in the previous uh, lecture. We discussed about the influence of money on a personality and how it affects human perception. I said that money has become an integral part of uh, a human personality and people perceive the way we deal with money or what money does to us in terms of our body language, the way we uh, talk to people the way we change our body language with regard to people with low income and high income and all that. So, by the way of answering some self probing questions, we learnt how to assess our personalities by the way we have been dealing with money. The number of relationships for example, you have with both high income and low income group indicates the level of your emotional balance and mental maturity. That is the level of your EQ that is emotional quotient as well as SQ spiritual quotient or spiritual intelligence that indicates uh, the way in which you are dealing with uh, these two uh, groups of people. And your body language should not change, it should be normal even while meeting uh, rich people or poor people. Changing of body language indicates lack of emotional intelligence, it is your own insecurity and sometimes it is also reflecting your greedy nature to be seen with rich people. However, those rich people are not going to assess you in terms of your uh, personality as a very integrated personality. Using one's hard skills as well as soft skills, one should be able to survive even when one loses all money in an unfamiliar surrounding. So, if one relies on oneself, one's inner resources, there is no need to panic even if you are losing money in very strange and unfamiliar surroundings. In terms of borrowing, returning money, returning money in time indicates your own self esteem and integrity and vice versa the opposite. It indicates your low esteem and lack of integrity if you are not returning money in time, not returning without frequent reminders or getting used to abuses by uh, people who have uh, lended money and thinking that you are cheating them, all are indicating your low level of uh, self esteem. Gathering things which money cannot buy can really ensure peace and happiness such as health, such as genuine love etcetera. Money management in terms of all these uh, general uh, uh, probing discoveries is very important. And in terms of budgeting, accounting and tracking one's expenditure, you need to uh, know how you can manage your money. So, in this lesson, let us try to gain some more insights about how you can manage money, but at the same time, how you can build your wealth, okay, how you can uh, establish yourself as a person and then how you can make yourself build the wealth instead of believing in some lottery or inheriting some wealth from uh, uh, your uh, parents or ancestors. Now, let us start with the idea philosophy of becoming wealthy and it is important that you should become wealthy first, that is the first thing. And if you ask the question, how do normally people become rich? So, the fortunate ones have actually inherited from uh, their parents, grandparents or they have won lottery or they even found a hidden treasure or sometimes they incurred huge profit through shares in their investment and then they learned how to retain the wealth. It is not just uh, getting this, they also learned how they should be retaining it. However, if you go for the first generation millionaires, almost all of them have created their wealth through their grit, work and by applying themselves in whatever chosen field. 
So, you should be thrifty and learn simple ways to manage your money. Let us look at some simple ways of managing your money. The first and foremost thing is to maintain a balance sheet, a balance sheet in which you are able to note your income and expenditure. Now, these days you can use any money apps which are on uh, your uh, mobile phone or you can use it on your computer or on your iPad or even if you take your diary and then make some lines and then note uh, expenditure and income or you simply use something like an excel sheet to keep track of the money spent that is fine. Identify the categories like uh, the basic categories that I have identified would include education which might mean tuition fees, books, uniform shoes, bus fees, newspaper and magazines and any kind of subscription that you pay in terms of uh, developing knowledge. Travel, so it could be the fuel that you use for your uh, uh, vehicle, the vehicle maintenance, service and then change of uh, tyres or uh, repair and generally the journeys uh, that you might be undertaking and the expenses which are incurred during the journey. House itself occupies uh, in terms of uh, uh, maintenance and other things lots of uh, expenditure. So, it goes in the form of rent, gas, water, electricity, cable, phone etcetera. So, now keep track of how much you are spending in all these things, make a note every time you spend it. Food is another major category in which you spend money like grocery, vegetables, even hotel bills when you go for eating outside or when you call for a party, how do you spend money and all that. Charity, this includes donation that you might be giving or even the tax that you pay the money that never returns to you, unrecoverable loan, you gave money to somebody that person passed away and the loan that you keep repaying, the loan amount that goes. So, that is under another category that you cannot recover. And the most important is savings, whether it is in LIC or shares or bank deposit or cash. Normally, they say that at least 20 to 30 percent minimum of your salary should be uh, going to this part that is your savings, but the wise invest even more uh, in terms of savings. But if you are able to do this, if you know where you spend and then if you are able to keep a track on how this money is going and which category is actually uh, making you spend more and if you are able to reduce okay, and then save. So, actually slowly and uh, gradually you will be becoming richer and richer. And then there are other uh, tips like uh, on the path of uh, accumulating wealth, there is enough in this world to fulfill your need, but not your greed. So, there are enough ways of earning money decently to fulfill your need even if it keeps increasing. So, our needs keep increasing depending upon the growth of the family. Uh, and the requirements of the family members and the people around us. So, it uh, needs keep increasing, but there are ways in which you can make decent money. But if you are greedy, then your greed can never be fulfilled. People lose their lifetime earnings owing to their greed. So, so many examples are there like their entire money saved in bank. So, they invest in some uh, land that comes for low price, finally they find out that uh, they got cheated. So, the documents are uh, false and then uh, during the famous gold rush in California for example, many people uh, out of their greed, they left in search of gold, but they never returned and their family members died in utter poverty. And today in this electronic uh, world where we are surrounded by electronic gadgets. So, so many fraudulent emails, advertisements lure people by appealing to their greed. So, saying that you will be getting this, just send your uh, uh, account number and other details and people send the account number and other details and the entire money is just uh, washed away to some other account and just because they were foolish to believe that somebody else is going to give so much money for them for nothing. So, just out of greed people lose money. So, for need there is always ways of improving and you should always focus on need and then if the greedy tendency comes you need to curtail that. 
And then uh, today uh, again uh, we are uh, living in this uh, virtual world where uh, desire has been given to us through advertisements and images and we believe that we need to buy things which we actually do not need. And this thing happens when we uh, go to a mall or uh, some shopping center. So, we look at that, we just go for window shopping, but then we uh, are uh, getting the appeal of the item so much and then we are tempted to buy. So, buy things that are absolutely necessary, that is another way to become uh, rich. So, buy only those things that are of high value, high value things are those things which you cannot live without, they are the most indispensable ones and avoid items which are of low value or no value. So, low value is like you can do without them, but still you have them, no value is you can actually do without uh, them. Some decorative pieces for example, you just hang it somewhere and then it keeps accumulating uh, dust and then nobody even sees that, nobody even appreciates it. You just uh, uh, got some fancy and then you purchased it and then it is just uh, lying on some corner. So, no value things, things by not adding, it is not going to make any difference in your life. And then the other important thing is uh, you should avoid impulsive purchases, like uh, you go see something and then immediately you buy. You need to do enough survey before buying a product, especially if it is slightly expensive and uh, make comparison. Today on the net itself, you will be able to make all comparison and identify the place where you get for the uh, best deal the product and uh, 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 use your uh, bargaining skills because uh, uh, you always save some money by uh, making a good bargain. Most of the times people hesitate to ask for something, but when you ask for a slight discount concession, you actually get it. And when you are not sure uh, whether you should buy a product or not, so when you are confused after looking at a product leave the place immediately, go home, give a second thought and if you really feel that the next day after two days still you should go and buy the product, it means that the product is indispensable and it is of high value, otherwise you just ignore. Now, with these small simple tips, you will be able to uh, live a thrifty life and then slowly move towards the path of becoming rich. But apart from that, let us understand that uh, becoming wealthy is actually a kind of mindset that you need to create and change your personality and develop required soft skills in terms of that. When I say that you should be thrifty, I do not mean to say that you should not have any aspirations to become wealthy. As suggested in the book title of Robin Sharma, uh, you should be like the monk who sold his Ferrari. What does it mean? First, you apply yourself you gain all knowledge that is possible, apply yourself, learn how to create your wealth and then create wealth to the extent possible just to know your self worth, not to show off to others. After creating your wealth, develop the ability to live like a monk that is with a detached attachment. So, whatever happens to your wealth or property will not affect you, will not give you heart attack will not kill you. Okay. Now, if you can have that kind of detached attachment, money will actually uh, follow you instead of you running after that. So, that uh, philosophical attitude you need to develop in terms of becoming wealthy first. And then you need to understand that wealth has an innate transient quality. So, it cannot remain stable forever with one person. So, detached attachment helps in maintaining balance irrespective of huge gain or loss. Now, let us look at some steps to a wealthy life. The first one that I am trying to drive home, the point is that understand the transient nature of wealth. So, there is a, a small story I would like to tell you in terms of uh, understanding the transient nature of wealth. Uh, one person inherits so much uh, wealth from his father and at the uh, death bed of his father, the father actually gives him one ring. Okay. 
and then he uh, says that uh, just remember this ring whenever uh, you are uh, uh, in a sorrowful situation and then that is the last word and then he dies. So, uh, this person uh, becomes so rich, he uh, does this export import and uh, earns lot of money and becomes one of the wealthiest uh, persons in his country. But uh, it so happens uh, most of the things that he was importing on a ship. So, there was a shipwreck and then uh, there was huge loss and then to the extent that he had to sell all his property and he was almost literally on the road and he was sitting on a bridge and he was completely heart broken and he wanted to commit suicide. He wanted to just jump from the bridge and then there was a deep river and he wanted to kill himself. But at that moment he remember what his father said. He thought that his father said something about the ring and then he just uh, takes the ring out and inside the ring it was written even this will pass away. So, when he read that even this will pass away, it struck to him that even this situation where he thinks that money is completely lost and it has destroyed him will pass away. So, that changed his mindset and then he again with the money that he salvaged from the items that were remaining, again he restarted with a very humble beginning applying himself by using all his skills. So, he again uh, gathered wealth, but he always kept that thing in mind that even this will pass away and he gained that wisdom at that crucial moment. So, the moral of uh, uh, the story with regard to uh, the attitude you should have uh, in terms of money is that you can be a millionaire or a beggar in an instant. So, that should not actually affect you and then that should not uh, uh, destroy your personality. Uh, I always remember uh, uh, this uh, lines from the Bhagavad Gita, especially it is philosophical, but it is more related to the attitude that you should have in terms of uh, money. It goes like this, what have you lost that you cry for? So, when you cry, what have you actually lost? What did you bring? Because you did not bring anything uh, when you were born that you have lost. What did you create that was destroyed? So, everything you created was already there. What have you taken has been from here, okay. you did not bring anything on your own and what you gave has been given here. You came here empty handed and you will leave empty handed. What is yours today belong to someone else yesterday and will belong to someone else tomorrow. So, if you understand uh, this thing, the transient nature of wealth and things that are material, so you will be able to develop an attitude that will make you prepared for living a very wealthy life. The next important point, in fact this should be the first important point that is you should know health is wealth. You need to take care of your health. And those people who think that, oh, I never got that break, I did not get that chance in my life uh, uh, to become very rich, many people have earned a fortune even after their 60s. Some people have uh, earned huge amount of money after their retirement. So, you need to be healthy to snatch good opportunities till the ripe old age. So, you cannot think that at the age of 30, I did not get a good break. So, you should not die at the age of 40 because uh, you uh, developed some kind of sickness and you are not able to sustain uh, in a very healthy manner. And again, uh, uh, I would like to recall the quote from Dalai Lama which we discussed in a previous lesson, particularly the part where he talks about health and he says, man surprised me most about humanity because he sacrifices his health in order to make money then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. So, a person who seldom goes to hospital has enough opportunities to go to his bank. So, try to minimize uh, by going to the hospital in terms of uh, uh, treating your illness. So, then you will be able to spend more time on creating your wealth and uh, going to bank for uh, saving the wealth also. 
Now, you should also understand wealth is not just money or gold or diamonds and the land that accumulate. So, it is not just the material wealth that you need to collect. Understand that wealth is more than the possession you have in the form of money, gold and land. Real wealth lies in the physical, mental, emotional and spiritual resources you create for yourself and the people around you. The people around you could be your siblings, children, friends, colleagues, students, neighbors and countrymen. Now, these people who are in your life, when you make yourself a resourceful person by gathering information and knowledge, gaining wisdom and common sense and developing hard that is technical as well as soft skills, money will chase you. But it is not that you are uh, gathering these resources for yourself, but you need to keep the people around to develop their talents and potentials and they will never feel insecure for lack of money. So, this goes more for your uh, children or uh, people who depend on you, if you can help them to tap their potentials, identify their talents, so they will never uh, be uh, dependent on you. So, you need to develop that indispensability in you as well as the people around you. In fact, job insecurity is felt only when one's real potentials are unrealized. If you perform like any other average person, you will never be promoted. As M. R. Kopmeyer says, your only job security is your indispensability. Job security will not come because you work in a government job or a private job is giving so much money and it will never throw you out. Job security is not coming because uh, uh, you are in a very dominant position and you can threaten others or coerce others to do work. Job security does not come in all these things, it comes only in terms of your indispensability, mostly in terms of your work ability. So, to create your own wealth, you have to be irreplaceable. So, wherever you are and whatever you do. So, indispensability, it means that you have developed your special talents and you are not like any average person. You are extraordinary because you have some special qualities which nobody else has. Okay. You are indispensable in the sense that there is something in the job which only you can do the way you are doing it. Nobody else can do it the way you are able to do that. So, everybody knows that it cannot be done by somebody else and then you become indispensable and only when they know that they cannot replace you, so your job becomes secured. The moment they know that oh, what you do can be done 10 times better than somebody else, so why should they keep you? So, you are always in a kind of insecure position. So, investing in yourself and developing core competence at work and establishing your uniqueness should be your primary objective. Not investing in gold, not investing in land, but investing in yourself and making your dependence and others to invest in themselves, their abilities. So, that should be the first primary concern and a major step towards uh, creating your wealth. And then in terms of uh, work culture, never compromise with perfection, although perfection may take its own time for the completion of a task and then when we discussed about procrastination, we understood that even perfection may be one of the reasons for procrastination. But do not have any lame excuses to compromise with perfection, okay. if you have to make it perfect, you should. And in this sense, I would say you should be like the famous uh, painter and sculptor Michelangelo. Now, let us look at a small anecdote about Michelangelo. A friend visited Michelangelo who was finishing a statue. Sometime afterwards, he visited again, the sculptor was still at his work. He cried, looking at the figure, his friend exclaimed, you have been idle since I saw you lost. 
So, the friend thought that uh, he has made no progress. So, that is what he meant by you have been idle. So, the this statue looks the same uh, the time that I met you and saw that the last time. By no means replied the sculptor Michelangelo, I have retouched this part and polished that, I have softened this feature and brought out this muscle, I have given more expression to this lip and more energy to this limb. Well, well said his friend, but all these are trifles. So, trifles means like useless nothing, okay, neg very negligible thing. It may be so replied Angelo, but recollect that trifles make perfection and that perfection is no trifle. I hope you are getting the point, Michelangelo says that these things which appear to be immaterial, negligible, useless small little things. So, when you keep touching them, when you keep adding them that adds to perfection. And then he says perfection is no trifle. So, perfection is a really great thing and that is not a very small thing that you can ignore. And the next step uh, towards a wealthy life, I would say that you should work with utmost devotion. So, it is exaggeration to say that you should work with 200 percent devotion, that is nothing like 200, but just for emphasis I would like to say when you take something, it is more than your 100 percent you should give, utmost devotion. Again, let us uh, uh, look at a small inspiring quotation from Martin Luther King where he says how a person should work in respective of the job that uh, he is involved in. So, quote from him, he says, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, so he is just a sweeper on the road, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted. So, he should sweep the street as if he is sculpting a statue with utmost perfection or Beethoven played music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. So, they were all geniuses. So, you were saying that even when you sweep a street, imagine that you are doing it just like a genius. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pass to say, here lived the great street sweeper who did his job well. So, what he says is even gods should be able to appreciate you for the work that you are doing even as the sweeper of a street. So, you should be able to do that with utmost devotion, that is the point. Let me conclude with another very interesting anecdote, which uh, sums up uh, the ideas that I am trying to make in terms of your job, the respect that you should have your have for your job, which will automatically make you uh, wealthy. This is a very interesting anecdote about uh, Lincoln. When Abraham Lincoln became the president of America, his father was a shoemaker and naturally egoistic people were very much offended that a shoemaker's son should become the president. They were aristocrats, so belonging to very high and royal family, so who thought it was their birthright to be in the highest government post. A shoemaker's son on the first day as Abraham Lincoln entered to give his inaugural address, just in the middle one man stood up, it was very rich aristocrat, he said, Mr. Lincoln, you should not forget that your father used to make shoes for my family and the whole senate laughed. So, he was just insulting, humiliating Lincoln, thinking that he is actually insulting him. And they thought that they had made a fool of uh, Abraham Lincoln, but Lincoln and that type of person is made of a totally different metal. Lincoln looked at the man and said, Sir, I know that my father used to make shoes in your house for your family and there will be many others here because the way he made shoes, nobody else can. He was a creator, his shoes were not just shoes he poured his whole soul in it. I want to ask you, have you any complaint? Because I know how to make shoes myself and if you have any complaint, I can make another pair of shoes. But as far as I know, 
Nobody has ever complained about my father's shoes. He was a genius, a creator and I am proud of my father. So, even as a shoemaker, he says that he was a genius, he was a creator. Just like what Martin Luther King was talking about a sweeper who should be like a creator and a genius. So, listening to this uh, spontaneous reply and retort, the whole senate was struck dumb. They could not understand what kind of man Abraham Lincoln was. He had made shoe making an art, a creativity and he was proud because his father did the job so well that not even a single complaint had ever been heard. And even though he was the president of America, he was ready to make another pair if there was any complaint. So, that humility, that has brought him from the background of a cobbler, a very humble background to the highest one, uh, to the level of the president of the United States. The fact that even whether it is sweeping or whether it is uh, polishing the shoes or making shoes, if you are able to do that with utmost devotion and if you are able to take that job as an art, as a creative endeavor and as if you are the genius in doing that, automatically you will reach great heights and as I said, money will chase you, you do not have to run after money. With this uh, thought, uh, let me conclude with uh, referring to two must read books. Both are written by M. R. Kopmeyer. I just refer to his most famous line from the book, how to get whatever you want. Your job security, okay, about that he says that. So, uh, your only job security is your indispensability. And then he gives more tips and then the other uh, book, How You Can Get Richer Quicker also comes with lot of uh, valuable ideas and then really it uh, motivates people to uh, get richer quicker in a very uh, decent manner. Now, with this uh, thought, we are concluding this week. And uh, as I uh, said, I am happy that uh, we are concluding the uh, 30th lesson and uh, three-fourth of the course we are uh, completing. So, we are completing with a very wealthy, rich thought that you should use all your skills, apply that and then uh, become not only a healthy person, but also a very wealthy person. So, with this thought, let me wish you all the best in all your endeavors and thank you so much for uh, watching this video. and. Thank you so much for being with me for uh, this wonderful uh, 30 lectures. We have 10 more and I uh, hope that you stay with me till then. Thanks again.